I'm Amy Gonzer, owner of 620 Art Gallery Studio and Studio in Round Rock, Texas. Um, today, I will be speaking to Jane Copeland, whose painting titled Central Park Gossip was awarded fourth place in our current show. And currently we are showing work um, from the Central Texas Pastel Society. And it is a member show and it is titled Pastels are not always pastel. Um, and so it's obviously a pastel show. So <laughs> welcome Jane, how are you today? Thank you for being here. Thank you, Amy, I'm good. Good to be with you. All right, the first question I have for you today is, how long have you been a member of the Central Texas, Texas Pastel Society? Uh, just about three years. That's interesting because the other two artists said the same thing. So <laughs> how old is the society? Like how long has it been established? Oh, I, it's been a long time. Um, in 2017, though, we gained our nonprofit status before it was just kind of a club. Okay. Gotcha. Organization. So maybe so, that's when more members started. It could in. be. I just joined when I moved to Georgetown in 2018. So okay. just got connected with the art community as soon as I got here. Okay. So the, the physical meeting place is Georgetown. Yes. And I know you have members from all over central Texas. Is that right? We do. We even have one member who joins our current Zoom meetings from Upper Michigan and one wow. from New Jersey. Oh, so so it's so what what do you have to do to be a member then? <laughs> uh, just pay your dues. And, you know, before COVID, we met at the library here in town. Okay. And when that closed due to COVID, we started doing Zoom meetings, which allowed our members who had moved. But I think one is just in New Jersey half the year. Okay. But um, one who moved to Michigan was once again able to join our meetings, so it's been fun. Oh, so yeah, so that's the upside of technology, right? Yes. Some of us are like myself, I'm getting frustrated with some aspects of having to use technology every day and switching gears to do that with teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and missing, you know, like we miss interaction our, in, in our meetings, you know, the break oh. midway through and you oh, know, yeah. informal chat with members over a cookie and a cup of coffee. For sure. <laughs> we'll get back to that though, right? Yes, yes. Really soon, really soon, I hope. Um, tell us a little bit more about your, your personal um, art journey and background and how long have you been making art and like what other types of media have you used? Uh, actually, I have used no other media. Ah. I, I started in 2012 when a friend and neighbor and two friends and neighbors had taken some pastel lessons and both of them were more experienced artists. And they started gathering in one, of, one studio or another once a week to paint and they invited me to join them. So the inside joke amongst our friends is when I joined them the first time, I said, it's okay, I'll just watch. <laughs> <laughs> and they pulled out some source photographs and some paper and some pastels and just got me going. Yeah. And the following year we went to, uh, as a group, we went to the conference. It's the International Association of Pastel Societies. Oh. It's held every other year in Albuquerque. And there I discovered all these artists that we love who give workshops in Europe. This yeah. is how I'm going to travel. So then my first workshop, well, both workshops, I did one in France, one in Italy with Margaret Dyer. And she's a wonderful um, figures artist mm. and just got me right into painting figures from the beginning. Wow. All right. I like that idea of uh, traveling to Europe to do art. I mm -hmm. mean, why not like combine two wonderful things together? <laughs> because you're with a group of like-minded people, whether I, you do them before or not, and you usually have a base, but then you do excursions and get to be a tourist part of the time. But yeah. Oh it's, my gosh. It's a, it's a great I wanna thing do, to do. I want to do it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to know both why you love working in pastel, but also if there are some challenges to working with pastel. Yes, um, I love pastel for the immediacy 
you know, it's not like watercolor where you have to do this first and then let it dry mm -hmm. and or yeah. oil, you have to let it dry. And yeah. uh, plus it has a vibrance, you know, it's, you apply basically little crystals of pure pastel mm. in this, what people sometimes call chalk in that kind yeah. of stick um, mm -hmm. format. But it's like little pastels of pure, uh, little crystals of pure pastel that get applied. So it has a vibrancy mm -hmm. and a, a brilliance that you don't you don't always see in other media. The drawbacks is, uh, I think the major drawback is the framing aspects that it needs to be framed under glass oh, because yeah. you know somebody reaches up and touches it and it right. smears. Right. So. Um, I can see reflections in the pieces behind you right now, which is yeah, one of yeah. one of the major drawbacks. Oh, okay. I hadn't even thought about, I mean, I've thought about that, you know, like it has to be under glass, but I didn't think about that as like being a challenge, you know, so much, but I can see where it is a challenge. You probably also have to have a mat in there to keep you it away not. from the glass. Uh, actually, the pieces I'm looking at behind you right now don't have mats. That's right. Yours and we instead, you well, I use spacers. Uh -huh. So it's just a little thing that goes in that keeps the painting a little bit away from the glass. Ah, okay. Some pastel artists currently are just putting it right up next to the glass. Oh, okay. Well, I like the idea of the spacers. That makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. <clears throat> um. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this artwork behind me titled Central Park Gossip, which was awarded fourth place. Um, before I ask you a question about it, I just wanted to, for, for the viewers today, to let them know um, a little bit of what the judges said whenever we did the jurying and the judging. Um, I think that our favorite part about this painting is well, there's two things. One, you know, anytime you have people in a in a painting, there's a story in there. You know, like what's going on? Where are they? You know, um, in this case, like what are they talking about? You know, there's a story. So that immediately draws a person in. And the second thing was the way you use the light, the dappling of the light coming through the trees, and how the background just really gets dark, you know, and then it brings the, the figures up forward, you know, and really almost like puts a spotlight on the figures, you know, and highlights them. So those were the great things that, um, that we noticed about your painting when we did the judging. Um, so I wanted to ask you, what was your inspiration behind this painting? If you're working from a photograph, uh, you know, what sources did you have for the imagery and that kind of thing? Okay, well, I was in Central Park in New York City two summers ago, and uh, I spent about two hours just walking through and taking photos. And one of the things that inspires me to paint figures is not just the story, I agree with you, I love the narrative, but also what draws me is the graceful gesture, mm. you know, the movement implied. So when I saw these two women sitting on the park, it was, it was like all elbows and knees. And I just loved all those angles and such. And so for privacy sake, you know, I just took a quick snap and moved mm -hmm. on. And then I worked from that photograph to, mm -hmm. to do. I love that. Um, so do you, do you always work from, or primarily work from photographs that you've taken yourself? Definitely. And do you ever work from real, uh, real life, like from still life or from landscape? Um, very little. I, I have done maybe combination landscape for about 10 years. I volunteered working in the gardens at the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center. Mm. And so as I would work, I would look up and see a fellow volunteer doing, you know, that gesture would draw me and I would just stop and take my phone out of my pocket and take a picture. And I've done, did a series of about 12 paintings of people working in the gardens there. And so generally, especially with people working from photos, except from workshops that I've done, 
figure workshops where mm -hmm. we worked from a live model right. or portrait workshop where, where we did the mm -hmm. same. And that was my immersion into painting figures was from a live model in France. But I think the success was our teacher's ability to pose the model mm -hmm. to interesting arrangements and angles and graceful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gesture. Well, from, speaking from experience, I, I think anyway that drawing the figure and the human is probably the hardest subject matter there is. I don't know. That's just a personal opinion, but <laughs> I think you're doing a great <laughs> job of it. Um, so well, thank, thank you very you. much for sharing that piece with us. And uh, I'm really enjoying it, having it here in the gallery. Thank you. Um, so that pretty much concludes the interview today, unless there's anything else you'd like to add about your artwork or what you do. No, maybe just about Central Texas Pastel Society. Uh -huh. We're always welcoming new members. We hope we can meet in person again one day, Definitely. but um, it's easy to just look us up on the internet. Just type in Central Texas Pastel Society, it'll pop up and you can see member artwork and see our events and meetings and et cetera. Little plug there. All right, well, thank you so much, Jane, for speaking to me today. I really enjoyed our chat. Um, and congratulations again on winning fourth place in this show. It's a really nice piece. <laughs> thank you, Amy. Have a wonderful afternoon. Same to you. Bye, Jane. Bye.